Hi, this is the WTF SDK Zone Creation Tutorial Part 3. So in the previous two tutorials, we've basically focused on the direct visual aspect of the zone, uh, namely the scrolling background and other single instance background objects that kind of uh, populate the zone. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over things that are a bit more subtle, uh, namely the time of day effect and the weather effect. So let's get started actually so first I need to go to the time cycle panel in order for me to see the actual time of day transition effects so in the default map there's actually no change applied to any of the time slots and I am going to create a very simple daylight rotation by adding a specific defined time slot at hour 12 which is noon and I'm also going to rename that to noon. Um, notice that I don't have the I symbol on this particular uh, text, which means that it's only really being used internally. Obviously, it's nice to keep track of these time slots also by naming them. So the second time slot that I'm going to use is hour zero. Now, hour zero is actually quite special because it's a point where it would actually loop between um, from the hours that are in the evening so for example it loops from 20, 21, hour 22, 23 and then it loops to hour 0. It also loops forward so from hour 0 it loops to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the way to hour 12 and this would become apparent as soon as I actually create content for these two time slots. So I am going to go ahead and hit the new time slot button for this hour also and I am going to rename this midnight. So I am actually going to leave the noon hour alone because as you can see this is how I want the level to look like at noon which is why I specifically created a time slot for it to preserve this look um, or otherwise um, if I only create a single time slot uh, it will actually uh, replace the entire time cycle with that particular look and I can actually demonstrate that in a minute but now uh, let's actually work on this midnight time slot so uh, first I need to select the time slot obviously um, and obviously I need to create a time slot if I haven't done that already but since I have I am going to start modifying the um, color values of this particular time hour so starting from the background and you will notice that um, when I have the time cycle panel selected, when I've selected an active time slot, um, there's these color pickers to the right of each individual layer that I can use to change the colors of that particular layer. So I am going to start applying uh, a bluish black color to each of these layers. And I'm going to have it so as, as soon as I apply a color, you can see it changing. And because my alpha is not 100% applied, you can actually still see some of the old outlines in the background. You can see the mountain range is still there. And obviously, the rest of the layers needs to be worked on. And I'll pick the exact same color, but I will apply less and less um, color to each of the layers so that the closer it is to the front, um, the, the less pronounced this color effect is. Um, kind of really creating this um, effect where it seems like there's light coming from the front. So um, basically, the 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 um, alpha values in case you haven't been paying attention it's 80 percent I believe it's uh, around 60 um, 50 45 so now that the midnight slot's been created I can actually scroll around and take a look at the other time slot to see how they look like and if you look at the time cycle um, slot you can actually see the percentage of mixing between the different hours and it's a bit abbreviated but you can still see so it's 91% midnight and 8% noon 
if I step an hour away from midnight, and you can see the sky already lightening up slightly as I step toward the noon hour. So now it's morning. Now it's noon. And now you can see the um the cycling of the zero hour at work. So now it starts to be between cycle between the hour twelve and the zero hour, which is midnight. And you can see the sky instantly darkening as I move away from the noon time slot. So I can quickly demonstrate how everything looks like if I don't half this noon time slot. I can simply delete a time slot by clicking the delete button in the um, time cycle panel. And what happens is everything gets converted into this dreary midnight hour because there is no um, there's no second definition for the time slots to transition into. And obviously that's not what I want. So I am going to insert back my default um, no change color um, settings for noon. I'm going to have to label it noon again. All right. So there you have it. Um, I am going to save. Now it's a good time to test. And since I recorded this in the evenings, you can see um, that the sky had darkened. So it correctly reflects the time of day that's on my local system clock. All right, now we're going to move on to the second part of this tutorial, which is the weather effects. So I'm going to hide this really quickly here. Hi, okay. Um, and we are going to change the panel from time cycle to weather. Now, uh, one thing that you want to make sure is to uh, use a time cycle slot that doesn't have any color alterations or else, um, well, you will be looking at a very screwy version of the weather panel because you would already have a color tint applied and you were trying to apply a secondary tint which makes things very difficult to work with. It's probably much better for you to start with a no change palette in order for you to make the weather, um, well, make it easier to work with the weather changes. So this is the weather panel and as you can see it starts with a default um, weather of clear and there's a hundred percent chance of it happening. It's just a, it's obviously a system default to make sure that there is a weather applied at all times. So I am obviously going to need to make some changes here. I'm going to add a new weather and call it fiery. Or just fire. Um, so in order for a for the weather to have a chance of happening, I need to increase the percentage of this weather. So now there's a 50-50 chance of either clear or this really weird fire weather happening. Um, and like the weather, I am going to go into each of these color pickers and select a color tinting change that gets applied to each of these layers. So I wanted to choose this because I want to have something that's really pronounced. And while this might not look like a realistic weather condition, it's, obvious, it's nonetheless a very interesting one. So I have basically applied a wet tint to the entire zone for this particular weather. Actually, I had a time uh, when there's a mountain fire near my home where the sky actually looks kind of like this. It's just kind of creepy, kind of like the end of the world. All right, so 
Now I can actually preview a combination of time and weather by switching the time cycle slot. So you can see this is kind of midnight and on fire, which has this uh, combination of blue and red purple tune to it. And obviously at noon, you get to see the uh, red fire color. All right, now that I have both of them done, I am going to save and test again. And obviously, in order for this to work, I need to refresh and let the project reload. And there's an element of luck here because, as you can see, the weather is clear this time. So I'm going to have to quit and re-enter. There we go. So that's how the zone looks like, both in the dark and with the fire effect applied. It's really weird, but hey, it's basically what you make of it. So that's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial, and I'll see you next time.